The world was startled by the two atomic explosions in 1945 in the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The United States was in possession of the most destructive weapon known to man up to that time. Four years later, it would be the Soviet Union's turn to show the world its dominance over atomic technology. Beginning in the 1960s, in addition to the U.S. and the Soviets, the United Kingdom and France also prided themselves on being nuclear armed. You must remember that in 1962 the world lived through the most tense moments of the FIA war. It was the famous Cuban Missile Crisis. The possibility of a nuclear confrontation between the two powers had never been so feasible. Once the moment of tension was over, it was necessary to think of ways to avoid this belligerent tendency. Mao Zedong's China, which at the time was not part of the United Nations Security Council, you may remember that the country had been replaced by Taiwan after the Communist Revolution of 1949. China in 1964 would also do its atomic test. In 1963, a treaty was concluded with the objective of banning nuclear tests at sea, in the atmosphere and in space. 126 states signed the treaty, but it turned out not to be very successful, as it was not enough to guarantee the end of testing. In July 1968, led by the United States, the Soviet Union and the United Kingdom, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, better known as the NPT, was opened for signature. The treaty would have a validity of 25 years, that is, entering into force in 1970, it would expire in 1995. Already in the first article of the treaty, there is a commitment by nuclear-armed countries, in this case the United States, Soviet Union, United Kingdom, France and China, not to transfer nuclear weapons or artifacts to non-nuclear-armed countries. In the second article, it is the turn of countries that do not possess nuclear weapons to assume the commitment not to receive this technology from states that possess it. Much. But what are the central points of this treaty? Broadly speaking, TNT focuses on three basic pillars, the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, the peaceful use of nuclear technology and disarmament. As is evident, the treaty makes it clear that states are not prohibited from using nuclear technology for peaceful purposes. In Article 4, there is a commitment by states that already have nuclear weapons to negotiate effective measures to stop the arms race, in addition to seeking treaties that make disarmament possible. But what would be the guarantees of disarmed countries when signing the treaty? As a result of debates within the framework of the United Nations General Assembly, the signatory countries that do not possess nuclear weapons receive the guarantee that they would not be attacked nuclearly by the five countries that possess them. And if they were attacked with nuclear weapons, they would be defended by nuclear-armed countries. By 1974, it had become apparent that the peaceful use of nuclear technology was not as safe as it appeared. India, under the rule of the first Indina Gandhi, has its first atomic test. Underground test, with a bomb that the Indians call Smiling Buddha, Smiling Buddha. When India becomes a nuclear weapon state, it is not violating the NPT for the simple reason that Indians have not committed to the treaty. While there was no violation of international law by the Indian state, it is clear that the transfer of nuclear technology for peaceful purposes needs to be monitored more carefully. As a result, the Nuclear Supply Group, MSG, Nuclear Suppliers was created in 1975, which would have the objective of supervising technical cooperation, this to avoid abuse in the transfer of nuclear technology for passive purposes. Regarding tests, in 1974, the United States and the Soviet Union signed a treaty that prohibited nuclear tests with weapons that would yield 150 kilotons. It seems that the two great powers were willing to talk about limiting their armaments. But why not discuss disarmament? Calm down, one step at a time. Although negotiations had started at the end of the previous decade, it was in 1972 that the United States and the Soviet Union signed the SALT plan, more precisely SALT I. This treaty would freeze the number of ballistic missile launchers for five years, in addition to promoting the freezing of anti-ballistic missiles. Throughout the decade, negotiations on the second treaty, SALT II, took place. But that's for the next video. Did you like this video? Oh, so like it, share it on your social networks, because that way, in addition to helping the channel grow, I'll know if I'm being useful. Big hug.